Next presentation is on business opportunities and challenges in dedicated freight corridor. We request Sri Vinod Bhatia to please join us. Sri Vinod Bhatia, Group General Manager, Business Analytics, DFCCIL, an IRTS officer of 1997 exam batch with professional experience of over 26 years carrier span a range of assignments in teaching, telecom, transport in field of zonal headquarter and railway board, the apex level. Worked and delivered results in various capacities in operations, planning, commercial marketing and IT. A self-driven leader who believes in execution of responsibilities as per expectation of stakeholders. Let's welcome Sri Vinod Bhatia on stage. I have to present few slides uh, on the topic business opportunities and challenges uh, in DFC. We all are aware that logistic cost of the total price or as a percentage of GDP is quite high in our country. It's near about 13 to 14 percent uh, in contrast to developed nations. And uh, it is estimated by one study that we are losing near about $45 billion in terms of uh, inefficiencies in the logistic cost. And uh, World Bank has started uh, logistic performance index and uh, as per Ratings of 2018, we were at the 44th position. So there is a scope to reduce the logistic cost and we have to work in that direction. Because of the inefficiency in the logistic sector and many other factors, we are all aware that uh, railway is losing the market share in terms of the freight uh, transportation. The market share which was 86% in 1950, it has dropped to near about 26% in last uh, one or two years though I have shown it as 41% uh, for 2015-16. At the same time, road is uh, gaining the market share and it's more than 60% right now. Why we are losing the market share on Indian railways is that because there is a lack of capacity. Capacity in that is in the terms of trains which you can run on any section in 24 hours. If you have a just glimpse of the golden quadrilator with the two, two diagonals, we can see that the 16% of Indian railway route is carrying more than 50% of passenger as well as more than 50% of freight traffic. Whereas the corresponding alignment to this, this diagonal for the road sector, the freight is near about 40% of the freight is being carried by the roads which are in parallel alignment to this golden quadrilateral. So here comes the DFC. What can be the use of DFC? Why there is a need? how there is a business opportunity and what are the challenges. That is the topic of my presentation today. We know that DFC can be a very safe as well as fast and assured uh, means of transportation. We are no doubt saving a lot of tons of carbon dioxide if we transfer the traffic carried by road to rail. And naturally, if we are using the higher capacity uh, dedicated freight corridor, the economic cost or the cost of carrying this freight on per unit basis will be quite low. That's why, that's how it will be cheaper. And we believe that we can offer these services in a very technical manner and in a customer friendly manner. So that's what, so a lot of opportunities are there. This slide gives you a glimpse of dedicated freight corridor. We are right now having a a running dedicated freight corridor between Rewadi and Palanpur. Rewadi is uh, in just at the border of Gurgaon and then Palanpur is at the border of Rajasthan and Gujarat. And on the eastern side, we are having a running corridor between Kurja and uh, Bhaupur. Bhaupur is near Kanpur. If I tell you about something about what sort of operations we are running, in the last one year, we have run more than 30,000 trains. And EDFC stands for Eastern Dedicated Freight Corridor and WDFC Western. On the Western Dedicated Freight Corridor, we are running near about 75 trains each day. And EDFC is also uh, catching up. Right now, 30 trains, about 30 trains are being run. And uh, if you, you can see that in the coming future, the uh, number of sections will become operational. 1 billion GTKM we are adding in each every day means number of trains are being added means trains are being run uh, as per convenience of the railways and the average speed which has been achieved on WDFC is around 100 km per hour this is the average speed for a particular train we achieved this and uh, and uh, first electric train between 
CMLK is near Ateli, near Rewadi, and P PNUN is Palanpur. The distance of more about, near about 640 kilometers was uh, covered in less than 10 hours. And uh, the whole section is being run by one crew itself. So that is also some sort of achievement. On IR, because of the speed differential between the freight train and the coaching train, the crew wastage will be quite high because they have to give part to the passenger trains. Then you can visualize the effect on operational efficiency. If you see on the first column, there are the number of the name of terminal and then traffic before opening of DFC in the second column and in the third column traffic after opening of DFC. You can see the variation means the growth which we these terminals are witnessing after opening of DFC. Similarly, the number of trains interchanged at two interchange points, Rewadi and PNU. Again, there is a growth of more than 8% in the number of trains which are being interchanged. If you see with respect to a particular sectors between, between ports and northern hinterland, the distance or the average transit has also come down because of uh, improved speed as well as uh, available capacity. With respect to CMLK, it's a Concord terminal in uh, Ateli near Rewadi and between Mundra, the average transit time has reduced uh, to 41 hours from 48. Similarly, both sides it, it has been shown. With respect to Pipawa, it's again from 51, it has come to 41. And uh, then for the, this is for ports. And if we have an idea about the private uh, container terminals, again, for them, the transit time has also come from 42 to 36, 65 to 64. Uh, with exception for Pipawa to Gadi, there were uh, issues in Viram Gaon handling terminals. That's why it's not because of the run. Now, if we see the impact of DFC on performance of Indian railways, the eastern DFC is running in North Central Railway and the western is running in North Western Railway. You can see the increase in speed, means speed of average speed of the trains on North Central Railway has increased from 30 km per hour to 47 km per hour. Similarly, for NWRs also, the speed has increased from uh, 23 km per hour to 50 km. This, I am talking about the freight trains which are being run on Indian Zonal Railways. Because of improved performance in DFC or the available capacity, the capacity on Indian Railway Zones has increased so they are able to run trains in a better way. So what are the contributions of DFC? This We, we have augmented the capacity, we have given the path freedom, then uh, our, our, our infrastructure is new, we are using new technology. And then um, just in time concept, because it will have a uh, implication for your inventory cost or uh, with respect to logistic cost also, just in a time concept can be easily uh, implemented if you are assuring the transit time. So for the milk tanker, one example is there that milk tanker, if milk tanker can come to Delhi from Gujarat in less than seven hours, naturally it will, it will uh, contribute in reduction of milk cost. So that can be a one contribution on our account also. So we hope that the uh, subscriber or consumers in Delhi will get benefited because of this good transit time on DFC. Now we, the ministry is also considering surveys for this new upcoming uh, DFCs. One is East Coast and East West and North South. These three DFCs are coming up. So how come we can have business development? Business development means on DFC, there is a traffic on Indian Railway which can be shifted to DFC or some new traffic can be there which can start and terminate on DFC itself or some new traffic can be there which can be shifted from road to, road to DFC. So to achieve these, what we are doing is that we are going for new PFTs as well as uh, new, our, our one section on eastern side from Sonpur to Dankri, we are offering it uh, under public-private partnership. So these are some opportunities where you people can be involved in construction as well as uh, development of uh, new PFTs. So there is a traffic potential. We have done some analysis that okay for the western dedicated freight corridor, there are 31 districts which are parallel in parallel alignment to this section and near about 8,000 trains were loaded in 2020 and 21. So near about 8,000 trains were loaded. If some portion of these train is sh trains are, uh, is shifted to DFC, naturally the available capacity can be used for 
passenger traffic also and for improved services also. Similarly, the analysis has been done for the Eastern DFC. Now, we, we have seen that yes, in Rajasthan, the lot of traffic is being carried by road. Just 26 million ton is presently being carried by rail. There is a huge potential in Rajasthan itself. Now, if, you, I, I, if I give you some idea about the commissioned section, 350 kilometer is running on e EDFC and 640 is on WDFC. We have gone for RFP for 14 locations and uh, PFT have to be established. Some applicants are like uh, Mrs. Adani, Mrs. Bakshi, SKN. And then we have uh, uh, notified 27 stations for goods traffic on this. And trucks on train, this is a, a service which is running successfully between Rivadi and Palanpur. 150 trains we have already run till now. And uh, then Concord has established a new terminal in Suvarup Kanj. Till now, near about 27 crore we have earned from our originating traffic. So we, we, we are st st having a strategy that how we can corner the traffic, means uh, trucks on train, uh, ra uh, road railers, we are in touch with the different uh, companies. Then swap bodies means the horse is changed and that can be, and then the uh, trailing load can be run as a train. And then we are thinking about parcel as well as modern loading, unloading systems, door-to-door -door models. We are in uh, uh, communication with various e-commerce companies. Then we are stressing or focusing hard on simplification of our business processes and then ease of doing business which is based on digital technology. So this is a, gl this is a glimpse of our truck on train service. In st August 21 it was started and um, number of trucks, n more than 2,800 trucks we have loaded and we have saved 7 lakh liters of diesel in terms of carbon dioxide, 1.85 million ton of carbon has been saved, carbon emission has been saved. These are the future routes which we have identified for trucks on train services. Uh, and we are quite hopeful that yes, industry will be uh, too excited to try these models. Then other business strategies are there that we want to have a, um, ensure wagon availability. I mean, naturally, if some fixed customer is there with us, then we can offer a lot of incentives in terms of pricing, etc. Then cargo consolidation. Uh, with respect to timetabled time services means we will assure that transit and then tracking so how we can use the IT in uh, ensuring that real-time based tracking of your cargo. And then road railer, domestic containers, some type of special coins, uh, special wagons for steel coils and then infrastructure development is also a new opportunity for the various stakeholders and uh, we are working hard to have a tailor-made solutions because we are being guided by the Ministry of Railways itself and we are in con constant touch with the authorities to bring out some new policies which can be win-win situation for all of us. Then if I um, summarize the various business development opportunities, there is a scope for PFT terminals and multi-logistics park, multimodal logistic parks. We have a seamless integration with the industrial corridors. Then we want to have special uh, long-term relations with freight train operations. Then door-to-door -door service providers. We want to ha work in direction of small parcels or less than a, a wagon uh, cargo load also. Then we want to have e-commerce tie-up with various uh, known uh, companies. And we are having some good MOUs with the top institutions uh, on, at India level and we are looking for the foreign partners also. Then with respect to maintenance works and machines, solar and wind energy, we are open to new ideas. Then what are the challenges which we are facing naturally the land acquisition issues, then environment clearance, forest clearance and then some, some um, some works have to be done by the state governments. There are also some issues. So these are the various contractual issues which we are facing right now. So this is all which I have to offer you right now. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. May I please request Mr. Alok Chha, Director Marketing and Strategy, All Stump Transport, to please join us on stage to present the memento to Sri Vinod Bhatia. Thank you so much, sir.